Sechus Kedush and Daf Nun Gimel begins in the middle of a discussion about Kajim Kalim, that's light carbonos with a lower level Kedusha, whether they belong to Kahanim, and Kahanim can use them to buy, sell, or even be Makadish and Isha. We've seen that it's a Machikas between Rabbi Huda and Rabbi Yaisi based on the Pasuk Vazei Yelacha. Now the Gemara said that there's a Machikas Amaroim, whether that Machikas still exists or whether Rabbi Huda agreed with Rabbi Yaisi that you cannot use it as your own property. Rabbi Yechelen has said that the Machlegis no longer exists, and Rav says that the Machlegis still st- stands, Rabbi Huda was not chayzer. So says Abaye, we have a proof that Rabbi Yechelen is right, and Rabbi Huda was chayzer from his opinion. And then at the end, we're going to have Rav who will say that Rav is right and defend that. So first we bring Abaye, who has a lengthy brysa that shows that Rabbi Huda holds that you are not allowed to use the carbonis as your own property. And it's a lengthy price of discussing the halacha that you cannot trade your chalik in carbonis for anyone else's chalik in carbonis. This is referring to Kehanim, who received a chalik, a portion of carbonis in the Beis HaMikdash. And it's a lengthy price. It brings many different examples of how you might want to trade. And it, he says you can't trade any of them, and it gives a source for each of them. And the proof is because the b'risa on Chumash Vayikra is Sifra. Sifra was written by Rabbi Huda, and therefore this is Rabbi Huda's opinion. And you see from the fact that he says you can't trade, that he holds that it's not yours. So you can't buy it, and you can't sell it, because it's really what a trade is, and therefore you shouldn't be able to use it for Kedushin either. Now, let's go through the b'risa, which refers to carbonos of animals, carbonos of birds, carbonos of menachos, and even within menachos there are different types of menachos, and it shows why we have a source for each of them that you cannot trade them for a portion in something else. So the first thing is trading a mincha for a for the meat of a carbon, like let's say you want to swap your carbon mincha, your portion in the carbon mincha for someone else's carbon zvachim, which is the word the Brisa uses for an animal carbon. So it says you're not allowed to do that because it says, V'chol mincha asher te'yefa betana l'chol b'nei ara in etiyah. The mincha has to go to everybody. You can't not get a mincha because you traded it for something else. Next, how do you know that you can't swap um, a mincha for a bird? A uh, carbon eif. Now, why do I think you're allowed to do that any more than a carbon zvachim? Because you never have a situation where a carbon mincha could replace a zvachim. There is no obligation of a carbon zvachim where we say that if you can't afford it, you can bring a carbon mincha instead. Even a carbon of you can't. You can only bring an eif. However, there are carbon eifos of birds which you can replace with a carbon mincha. So therefore, mincha and eifos are kind of interchangeable. So maybe you could change a carbon mincha for a carbon eif, not necessarily for carbon zvachim. So that we have a drush, you can't do that either, because it says, V'chol nasa be'amarcheshes, v'chol b'nei ar in etiyah, an entire pasuk, which Rashi says, the Gemara means to say is extra, and it's saying that the entire, all the korbanos, mincha, have to be given out to everybody, and it adds the salach, you can't swap it for anything, even for a bird. Now, you can't swap uh, mincha for anything, what about swapping an oif for a zevach? They are both blood kabanis, not flower kabanis. Maybe I could do that. So that you can't do either, says the Abraxa, because it says al machlas. Extra phrase al machlas. Rashi explains this in it. It's an imena inyan. It doesn't do anything in its context, because we already know that all kabanis mincha cannot be exchanged. And therefore, this is going to teach me that an oif for a zevach can't be exchanged either. Now, the Gemara says, what about exchanging a mincha for another type of mincha? We understand that perhaps the reason you can't exchange a bird for an animal is because a bird is handled by hand. The malika is with the hand. There is no tool involved. While an animal is shechted with a tool with a knife. Perhaps mincha to mincha, which is all by hand, maybe you could exchange those. So therefore, the Brisa gives a source for that. It says, v'chol mincha bula b'shem and l'chol b'nei all different types of minchas have to be for all b'nei harin. You can't get only one type of mincha and not a different type of mincha. Now, next, maybe I think that that just means to say that you can't swap a minchas marcheshes from a minchas machlas. Those are two types of pans that were used to 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 bake the carbon mincha on the oven. 
um, the machlas was a flatter, wider pan, which allowed the fi- the flame to reach more of the flour and oil mixture, and therefore became crispy, as opposed to the marcheshes, which was deeper pan, and the fire didn't have as much access to all the flour, and therefore it ended up being a softer brew in the end. So perhaps, therefore, I can't exchange, I understand that I can't exchange a soft for a crispy, a machas for a marcheshes, it's a different type of mincha, but perhaps I could exchange a marcheshes for a marcheshes, and a machas for a machas, maybe I can do that, and now we have a source also, because it says vachareva, that in the same Pasuk says, V'chol min v'chareva, whether it's a chareva, a dry one, or a vashemin, or an oily one, either way, you can't exchange anything for anything. And again, it says, V'chol b'nei all kind of have to be able to get all of them equally. Now, says the Bryce further, you can't split kachay kachim, what about kachim kalim? Maybe you could exchange, maybe you are allowed to exchange kachim kalim. The answer to that is, is that the same Pasuk ends off with Ishka Achiv, has to be equal. And in the next Pasuk, or the one after that, it says Imal Toida, for a carbon Toida, it's the same. So therefore, Kachim Kalam, like a carbon Toida, which is a Shlamim, you also have to make sure that everybody gets a piece and has to be equally. Now, Ishka Achiv, we also see that it teaches as well that every Ish Koyin gets a Chalik, even if he's a Balmum. The Kohanim who had a mum were also involved. They couldn't necessarily do the avoida, the things which count as avoida, but they could cut it up afterwards, they could skin it, they could all kinds of things. However, a katan is not qualified as an ish, and if he does not get a chilek, even if he doesn't have a mum at all. Okay, this is the brisa, and this is the raya that repeated was chaser. Says uh, Rava, we also have a brisa that shows like Rav, and it shows that the machlekes still exists, and the repeat was not chaser. The brisa says, refers to the time when the bread of the Lechem Haponim lost its bracha, and it was not satiating to any Krehanim. So it says that the Tznuim stopped taking a chilek at all. The um, Tzadikim said it's not worth it for us to have anymore. However, the hungry ones, the ones who are ravenous, they took uh, a chilek, and it says that they were chokim. What does Chokim mean? They divided it. So the Gemara assumes that it means is that they would trade it for something. They would say, you take my chalik in this, and I'll take your chalik in something else. At least they got something out of it. So you see that they were still able to trade. So obviously, this must be Rabbi Huda's opinion, and no one else holds that way. So Rabbi Huda still, therefore, holds his opinion that you're allowed to trade. So the Gemara answer is no. Chokim here doesn't mean that they traded it. Chokim means that they grabbed it. And they would grab their piece and other people's piece as well. That way they would have more, and then maybe it would satiate them. Like we learned in the end of the Bible, he said that there was a story with someone who grabbed his chelik and someone else's chelik, and they would call him Ben Chamson until the day that he died. And Rabbi Barav Shila said, what does Ben Chamson mean? It's from the Pasuk in the that says, Alekai Paltenim Yad Raja Hashem, save me from the hand of the wicked, and me kaf me'avel v'chimitz. So Chamson, so Chimitz, that's the idea that he's grabbing. Now, Rabbi has a Pasuk in Yeshayo, which he says is the explanation of this word, Chamutz. It says, Limdu heitev dir shemish, but ashru chamutz, shiftu yasam riva amana. We're talking about defending those who are uh, abused and attacked by others. So it says, ashru chamutz, that is to help the one who has things that are stolen from him. So you see, chamutz refers to the grabbing, the theft. Okay, that concludes this. So again, we now move on to the next line in our Mishnah. We're analyzing the halakha that you cannot use my Shani to be Mekadosh Nisha. We've seen this in Machlech, is whether or not, if it was used B'mezid, whether that is okay, but B'shegi for sure not. So the Mara says, what is the source? You can't use my Shani. So Mara brings a uh, Maimur of Acha Braid de Rava that he quoted the Gemara, meaning he quoted that this is what we said in the Mish Medrash. The Torah calls Maiser la Hashem. It says, V'chol Maiser ha'aretz mezer ha'aretz me'pri ha'aretz la Hashem hu kodesh. La Hashem. So it's La Hashem Hu. So that it belongs to Hashem, it doesn't belong to you, and therefore you cannot use it for your own purposes. You can't use it to be Mekadosh and Isha. It's not considered to be yours. So now the Gemara asks is a number of other things well, you, you are allowed to use for Kiddushin. They do belong to you, but you have similar expressions. So first the Gemara asks from 
Trumas Meiser. There it says, Kin Terimu Gam Atem Trumas Hashem. It calls it Trumas Hashem. But we have a mission that says if somebody is Makadish with Truma, it works. Uh, so the more answer is because it doesn't say La Hashem. It just says Trumas Hashem. La Hashem would mean it belongs to Hashem. Trumas Hashem just means it's a mitzvah of Hashem. So next, the more asks about Chala that was taken off from your bread, which is a Matnas Kahuna. And it says, Titnu La Hashem. So there you do have La Hashem. And yet we have a mission that says if somebody is Makadish with them, it works. Uh, it refers to all true mice as a whole, and Chal is one of the true mice. So the Gemara answer is because it doesn't say Kodesh. By us, it says La Hashem, Kodesh La Hashem. La Hashem, who? Kodesh La Hashem. There, Kodesh is lacking, and therefore it's not considered to be Momen Gavoya. So the Gemara then asks, what about Shemitah? Shemitah fruits is called Kodesh. It says, Yevuhu, Kodesh Tia Lachem. And yet, somebody who can be Mekadesh with the fruits of Shvius, as we've seen on the last half. So the, and the Gemara quotes a Mishnah that expresses that as well. So the Gemara says, because there it doesn't say La Hashem. It says Kodesh, but the La Hashem is missing. You need the two of them. So then the Gemara asks about Shuma. Shuma it says, Kodesh Yisrael La Hashem. Rish is Tfuasai. It says both Kedish and Lasha. And yet we learn that somebody can be Makadish with Truma. So the Gemara says the Kedesh here is referring to Yisrael. It says Kedesh Yisrael Hashem. Rish is It's saying that Yisrael is Kedesh. They are Hashem's Truma. We are Kedesh like Truma. But not that the Truma itself is Kedesh Lashem. So the Gemara says, okay, but then you see from there in context that Truma is Kedesh Lashem. You're comparing. You're saying that Kal Yisrael is Kedesh Lashem, just like Truma is Kedesh Lashem. So you also see there that Truma is Kedesh Lashem, even though the Pasuk is talking about Kal Yisrael. So the Gemara says the Rav and Saba explain this in front of Rav. He says, it says who in the Pasuk? About Miser, Shani. It says uh, Lashem, who? And who the Joshua is Bahav Yasa, yeah, it has to stay in that Kadesh situation. It cannot be used as Chul and can't be exchanged. Okay, the Gemara now brings in the next line in the Mishnah, and now we're going to look for the reasons of two halachas. So the next line says that as far as hektish, it's a machag between Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yehuda, whether it works b'shagig or b'mezid. That's Rabbi Meir says b'shagig doesn't work, b'mezid works. Rabbi Yehuda says b'shagig works, b'mezid does not work. So the Gemara points out you have two things, you have two opinions on items that uh, hold that b'mezid it works, but b'shagig it does not work. So that's Rabbi Yehuda um, about meiser. He holds b'mezid it works, b'shagig does not work. Meaning, if you knew you were giving meiser, it's a good kedushin. If you didn't, then it's no good. And hektish according to Rabbi Meir is the same thing. So says the Gemara. Rabbi Yaakov said that he heard from Rabbi Yechanan the explanation for this. Why should the shagig be no good if it works b'mezid? I mean. If, that means it belongs to the man. So why shouldn't it be no good if he and she were not aware that this is what they're using? So we have to figure out hektish and miser. So the Gemara says, Rabbi Yaakov says, I heard from Rav Yechanan an explanation for each of them, and I don't know which is which. I heard one of them, that the problem is that the woman wouldn't want it, and it's a mekach to her. And the other one, the problem is that neither of them wants it, and it's a mechah place to both of them. Now, if Kamina would be, if you ask the woman and she says, no, I don't mind, do you still have to go find out if the man minds or not? Because do we assume that he minds, or do we assume that he doesn't mind? Now, he says, I don't know which one is which. So he says, revere me, I'll explain to you which one is which. My sir is a problem for her, it's not a problem for him. She has to go schlep it to Yerushalayim to use it there. He, he saves himself the trip by giving it to her and making her go. So she's not happy with that, but he is. Hektish, by him giving it to her, they're both being mechalat. They both have me'ila. They're using Hektish inappropriately. So neither of them wants that. So it's logical that it was Meiser was the one that she is not happy with, but we assume he is. But Hektish, neither of them. Now, Rav Yaakov didn't assume that because he said, I could argue the other way as well. I could argue to bring the Meiser Shini to Yerushalayim she doesn't want to do it, and he doesn't want her to have to do it, and he himself doesn't want to do it. He doesn't want her to have to do it, he doesn't want something to happen to her on the way, and he he's not interested in having to stop it himself. And it really has no value here, outside of Yerushalayim, so it has to be brought to Yerushalayim, and so, therefore, neither of them want that. However, as far as Hektish, uh, she 
shouldn't uh, want the hektish because she doesn't want the chulin of hektish. She doesn't want. The, why should she want to get stuck with hektish, which was ne- used inappropriately? She could just ask for something else. She has not. She stands to gain nothing from that. However, he is happy to get rid of his hektish and say, "Here, I'll give it to her." And now it's her problem, and therefore he perhaps is happy with that. Okay, now the Gemara asks Shiloh. The Gemara says, "Rav asked Rav Chizda." In the case where the man is Makadish and Isha with money that belongs to Hektish, where Rabbi Huda said that it's not Chal. So the question he wants to know is, does the money become Chulin now? When you spend, when you use Hektish money, so the Kedusha goes off it. So here, he tried to give a Kedusha with it. Would the Kedusha go off it? And now he's Chai of the carbon Mila, but can you now consider the money to be Chulin and therefore you're allowed to use it going forward? So the Gemara answers, the condition wasn't Chal, so the whole transaction is void. So how could you possibly say that the money becomes Chulin? Now, as a follow-up, the Gemara says, Rav Chibar Avin, as Rav Chizda, what about if you use Hektish money as a purchase? You use it to pay for something that you bought. Um, so he says, he answered, the Kenyan doesn't work either. Yehuda would say that a Shagig of Kenyan doesn't work with Hektish money any more than a Shagig of Kedushin works with Hektish money, and therefore, of course, it doesn't go to Chulin either. Now, on this, the Gemara asks the Kasha, we do see a Mishnah where Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yehuda argue, what is the Allah of a storekeeper who receives Hektish money? But in their Machlekes, everyone agrees that it the Kenyan is Chal, and it goes to Chulin, and therefore he violates the Me'ilah, which is not like what Rav Chiz has just said. Now, what's the price of there? The price of there is discussing if you give money to a certain uh, type of individual, under what circumstances is he supposed to assume that you're giving them to spend, and therefore if it's hectish, it's your problem. Um, if you gave him the hectish, this is referring to where the representative of the Beis HaMikdash the Gizbar, he gave the money. So it's his problem for giving him something that he thought he was supposed to spend. Under other circumstances, he's not supposed to use it, and therefore it's the Gizbar is okay for giving it to him. He, he's validly assuming he's not going to use it, but the person who uses it then, he violates it. Now, the three types of people we'll discuss are a money changer, a regular homeowner, and a storekeeper. So the money changer, he needs cash all the time. He's constantly trading coins, therefore, if you give it to him, you you have to have it be wrapped up so that it's clear to him that he's not supposed to use them. If he gives it to him untied, just open cash, then it's the Gizbar's fault. As far as the Baal bias, the homeowner is the opposite. There's no reason to assume he'll use it, and therefore, even if you give it to him open, it's his me'ila. Now, the question is, what about the storekeeper? The storekeeper needs cash, but doesn't need quite as much cash as a Shulchani. So that's the Machlech is between Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yehuda, according to Rabbi Yehuda, the Chenvini has the Lach of the Shulchani, and if you give it to him open, he's allowed to use it, and it's your Me'ila. And according to Rabbi Meir, he has the of the Baal Bayis, and there's no such heter. But either way, the Gemara is asking, you do see that if the Chenvini receives it, he will be assumed that he'll use it, and it's Chal Kenyan, and it becomes Chal. So on this, the Gemara answers, it's not a proof. Rabbi Meir really holds that the kinyan is not chal at all. Like we said here, it's b'shoigeg, it's not chal the kinyan, it doesn't become me'ila, it doesn't become chul, and nothing happens. What he was just trying to do there was he was saying, well, Rabbi Huda, even according to your opinion, should still be minded to me that it has the halacha of a bala bias, uh, and that therefore the issue would be the gizbar's and not the the actual chenveni, not the actual store keeper. And on that, Rabbi Yehuda said, no, he actually has the Allah of Shulchani, and you have to give it to him wrapped up, because otherwise he's going to use it. But this is not to say that Rabbi Meir agrees that it's Chal the Kenyan at all. It's not Chal the Kenyan. He was just saying, according in Rabbi Yehuda's opinion, you hold that it is, there we have this, Discussion is he like a chenveni? Is a chenveni like a shalchani or like the Baal Bayes?